this, I'm here with Mario. This is Sabin Point in Riverside. Uh, this is the exact location as to where he had his dogman encounter. Can you tell me roughly around what time of year it was that you had your sighting? It was about midsummer, so I want to say, like, you know, mid July. Um, something around then. It was like, you know, about 8 p.m. It was a warm evening, um, hanging out down here, and, you know, pretty typical summer night. Yeah, and if, if you look around the area at all, there is no light here, so it's very limited as the light source. So at night, this beach would be in total darkness. Mm -hmm. The closest one you have would be from those yeah. by the basketball court, which is you know, hopping the skip over there. Other than that, like, you know, looking down here, because we're in this rock wall behind us, and um, standing right here was what I saw. And, you know, like I said, it was very dark, so it takes a minute for your eyes to adjust um, when seeing something in the darkness. And kind of, at first, you're kind of like, oh, it's a dog. And then um, my friend I was with at night, even she was saying, what is that? That doesn't look like a dog. That looks like something a little bigger than a dog, you know. It ruled out bear. looked very, you know, kind of sickly. It looked like it was, like, patchy, you know, patches of fur on it, you know. It looked like it was had mange or something. Um, and look, like it was splashing around because you know it's low tide. Yeah, the tide, water tide was will, up higher. Yeah, tide will, will hit about here. When the tide is higher, so it was splashing around. The water. That's how we first heard it. We were kind of walking by casually, and we heard the splashing. And I kind of looked, you know, looked over, and then we saw this. And it's kind of like a, a growling noise. I'm like, is it, a, it was either two dogs fighting or one dog fighting. You know what I mean? It was, <laughs> it was, it was weird. So we, our first instinct was to like back away. If I had a flashlight, that would have been great, but I think I was so shaken by it, we both were, that we just power walked away out. You know, and you know how you have that feeling of somebody's behind you and trying to grab your neck? We had that feeling walking back. And we just got in the car and we booked out and we were just kind of like, what did we see? And that was back in 2014. And, you know, since we've had other encounters around the area, like one town over in Warren. Um, what our friend Shane and Crystal has seen it in like the Seekonk area or from Amberson and Seekonk area. So this area is definitely pretty like active. Active for it. <laughs> you know, it's like but if you look around, like not a lot of a lot of wood areas around around this town, but not here. Like most of the woods that are maybe down there. It's been known to be a decent swimmer. So you know, is it swimming around the island? Is it, is it stuck in East Bay? Doesn't know how to get back to mainland? Um, that's just another question for another day, I suppose. But is it still in this area? You know, several years later, we don't know. The last encounter. What year was the last encounter in this area? It was last year. It was last year. February of last year. Yeah. So, so if there's multiple creatures, cause we we all thought that maybe it was the same creature. You know, that the one that we all saw, but. It's been spreading even more so. And could, by this time, I'm sure they, you know, they mate and I'm sure they reproduce and like rabbits and they, they could be everywhere. We just have no idea. They could be watching us right now for all we know. So when you see this creature, can you give me the best detail of it that you possibly can from the ears to the tail or if it had a tail? Yeah, it's like with the silhouette of it, you couldn't really tell... I couldn't really tell with the ears, but just the way it's, I, I, the most of the, the one thing I caught was the hind legs, and those looked, you know, just like my dog, you know, my, my little guy is like a little, little black and gray, little pug, bugaboo, but, you know, definitely had that kind of canine arch to it, um, looked about six feet long. Um, so that's why we kind of ruled, like, that's a big dog. I've seen some big <laughs> dogs. I, I, my friend has a Newfoundland, and they're big dogs, but this was a little bigger and just skinnier. Six feet in length. That's and, a long length for a yeah. dog. <laughs> like, you, you would say, what, about bigger from here to about here. That's a big dog. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, compared to me next door, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like maybe a little bigger, you know. And you know what it was doing down there, you know, hunting for fish. It sounded like it was it was eating something, whatever it was doing. And there was there was kind of like a whine and growl to it, where maybe it like sensed us there and was like telling us to kind of back off. And that was the first instinct was to back off. <laughs> and so, we, 
like I said, we took off. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, it's a big thing, and definitely wasn't your household pet. So in spring, early spring of 2012, my friend Amber and I were driving through a back road in the middle of the night, well, early morning, it was around 2, 2.30ish or so in the morning, on this tiny little back road that cuts behind a whole bunch of farmland. So as we're going down the road, she had her parents' big Chevy Blazer, for us little kids at the time, I want to say. <laughs> so as we're driving along, we're blasting music and talking and listening to the music, and this coyote just comes out and runs and stops in the middle of the road, as in, here's the yellow line, here's, here's the coyote in the middle of the road. Its ears were back, its fur was on end, its tail was between its legs, and from us perspective looking at it, it was looking over its shoulder into the woods. There was no way around it because of the way it was and how big our car was and how narrow the roads is, so we just kind of crept up to it. Got closer and closer. It kind of flinched towards us, but it was paying attention to whatever was in the woods. So at that time of night, we were like, well, we don't want to beep, you know, because we don't want to wake up anybody, but kind of have to go around this thing. So she gets up closer and closer and closer. It doesn't even really look at us. It kind of like slightly moves its head, just focused on whatever it is in the woods. And Amber's like, what's it doing? And I'm like, that's, that's something scared of something, you know? So then finally, it starts to kind of go over into the other lane enough, not fully back into the woods, but enough for us to slowly be able to kind of creep around it. So as we're creeping around it, since Amber was driving, she was looking in the rear view mirror and I was looking in the passenger mirror. Then all of a sudden, this thing that is a lot bigger than the coyote we were just staring at, granted we do have eastern coyotes, which are normally bigger than the average coyote. They're known as koi wolves. Some people still call them eastern coyotes, but they're different than average-sized coyotes. We were staring at the eastern coyote, koi wolf, decent size. This thing comes running out behind a car diagonal past us and into the woods. The back end of it, you could see it through the back window, and I'm not exactly sure how tall blazers are, but that's a decent amount of feet. You could see the whole entire back end of it coming. It was a lot bigger than the coyote. You got to sit there and stare at the coyote. Granted, I, my father was a hunter, so I grew up around animals and having to skin them and prepare them and dress them, so I know what a coyote looks like, big or small. It definitely wasn't a coyote. You could see the snout on it. It had a very long snout and a big bushy tail. And the way it ran behind the car was like a human would. It was so awkward looking because the gait of it. And it just right to the woods. Now this one, could you see the ears on it? And When we saw it behind the car? Mm -hmm. They were back a little bit more as it was running. But you could, still, you could still see it. But the most thing I remember was like the snout of it and the tail because I was just like oh my now, god it doesn't end. Do you know if the ears came out of the top of the head or were they more like on the side? The way it was running the ears were being pushed back like the way his body was but I feel like if there wasn't like muscle tension mm -hmm. there would be more erect kind of like like this kind of placement mm -hmm. like up here like kind of on top but off to the side still. You know so what I mean? Kind of like a Doberman would have been. 
Yeah, on yeah, the side yeah, yeah, that, like that type. Yeah. Um, did you do you happen to know what the back legs of the creature look like? Huge. They remind me of a lion. Were they canine in feature or more human like? No, they were they were canine. It was like that haunch. The hawks. Like, yeah, the hawks. That was it. Like the back end of it was just so thick and so massive. It was it reminded me of a lion just because of how thick and muscular it was. It's bigger than me, I'm not that big, but still like Did you see eye shine or anything like not that? Not the first time, no. Because of the angle and how it was running. We didn't see the eye shine the first time. Okay. So the second time that we saw this creature, I just refer to it as a creature because I honestly don't know fully what else to call it. Um, I was with a different friend, and it was here at my apartment. So my apartment has walkways that lead all the way around that leads to different apartments because there's multiple different apartments in this area. My friend and I were sitting on my little stoop in front of my apartment smoking a cigarette. We have like the blacktop tar, so if something walks on it, you can hear it through mm -hmm. all the pathways. As we're sitting there, you hear like the pads of a foot and the slight like click of nails, and you hear something like, panting as it's walking and it's pacing, but it's off to the corner. The walkways, they go through the apartments, they go through the field and whatnot. We could just hear it on the other side. It was really hard to tell if it was like there at the field or like right there, but it was directly on the other side of us, regardless of it. So after hearing it for a while, my friend got a little nervous and I was like, well, you know, I have a lot of coyotes over here. So if you want, we could, we could head inside. So we head inside, uh, we were finishing our cigarette, she was sitting at the chair that's right by the window, and as she's putting out her cigarette, it's about 11.30, I go to take out my contacts and she was too scared to go outside because of whatever that animal was, so I was getting ready to go to bed. And all of a sudden she screams, oh my god, something went behind that car! So I come out, and I'm used to, there's deer that run through here, there's foxes, like I said, coyotes, skunks, raccoons, they're huge, so I'm just kind of like, Okay, it's another animal. Let's go see what this animal is. So I come over and she's like, no, it ran behind that car. So I'm looking through the first window. I have Christmas lights that are normally lit up all year round. They start at like a little ficus tree and it reflects on the glass. I see something behind the car and I can't figure out what it is. So I'm like actually like, oh, I don't know what that is. It's shaped weird. So I go over to the window that's closest to it, but I can't see anything because of my Christmas lights reflecting on it. So I open up the window. When I open up the window, it makes a noise because it was like, because you're opening the window. Mm -hmm. And this thing that was behind the car crouched down and it was like bull legged. Like, not like, like this. It was like this. And it let out like a double voiced growl. It was two different voices at once. It was like a deep, deep growl voice. At the same time, there was like a high pitch kind of like whine scream kind of noise with it. And I never heard. Anything like that, so I can't think of anything else better to describe it to you other than it was two different voices at once, and it was creepy, and the way it moved, I thought there was some naked guy drunk walking around my apartment <laughs> building in the middle of the night. So I jumped back, because I was like, yo, what the... You know, thinking that it was a guy, because the way it moved, it was so fast. The way it just jumped down into a semi-defensive, bull-legged, awkward pose. So we're staring at it, and I'm like, what is it? And she, she's freaking out, like, see, I told you there was something, there was something. And I'm trying to pay attention to what this is. And it gets up on its back legs, but, like, its hands kind of did like a, like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a drag mm -hmm. kind of motion. The only way I could think to describe it is just, like, to pantomime it, so it went like this. It kind of lifted up its hands, but it was still kind of, hunched in mm -hmm. that position, but it still cleared the car. There was a silver car that was parked over there. I want to say it was like a Buick or something. It was like that older mm -hmm. kind of style. And it towered over the car when it was still in that hunch. Down. Yeah, position. It was kind of like sitting on itself. And then it would like raise one hand and just kind of hold the hand up and then it would put it down. Raise the hand up. And it wasn't like a paw. There was like a hand, like fingers, and there was... A lot of uh, the sightings claim that they would resemble it towards a raccoon hand, except with claws at the end of them. That I could totally see, because raccoons also have five digits, mm -hmm. you know? So I could totally, I could totally see that. There's a street light 
that's right there. So it has like a little beam of light because it's shaped like the old-fashioned kind of lantern mm -hmm. street light. So it's not just like a direct beam, but it still radiates outwards enough. And there's these little street lights all throughout my parking lot. So as we're watching it, when it, it would just keep doing that, like going down, sticking its hand up, going down, looking around. And as it turned, as it turned from one way to the other, you could see the different colors in the eye shine from my window to where this is. That's how big the eyes were. And what color did those eye shines come out as? So when it would turn and it would start to look, it would be like that reddy amber, like that orangey, like fire flame color. Mm -hmm. And then as it got like more straight on, it would flash like a yellow green. And then as it went this way, the light would catch it and it would go back to that amber color again, but it would just flash because then the eyes were out of it. Mm -hmm. And then as it turned back again, you would get the same thing, the flash of that like ambery, like, like fire flame color. Mm -hmm. Then as it looked directly towards us, it was like that yellow green and then back to the red. And it kept doing that. And we took turns watching this all night. I tried taking like pictures of it the best that I could <laughs> from the window. And at first I didn't think I got anything because I have a screen to go through and it's pitch black and... I had a crappy um, 5C iPhone just because I like the lime green. So we watched it right across from where it was. I had a maintenance guy, a neighbor who lived there. Super nosy. <laughs> so 6.30 like clockwork, his lights turned on, and it was right next to where the apartment was. The lighter it got, the harder it was to see it. We could still hear it. We could still hear it move around. You could hear it, like, you know, get up on the grass and everything. And like I said, everywhere else is surrounded by light. Mm -hmm. So if it left, you would have seen it. But we could still see it. But it was just seemed like it was shrinking the lighter it got. So finally, when we could barely, barely see it, but we could still hear it, when it hit like 6.30, boom, Henry's lights go on. I tell my friend to stay up here and watch it because when I'm on the ground, I'm not going to be able to see over the cars. I can only look underneath the cars. So I'm not going to be able to see it if it moves as I'm going down the stairs and out the door. So she's struggling to see it. I'm along the opposite side of it, and I'm trying to, like, crouch and look underneath the cars to try and see its feet, and then I just run and just jump out to where it is. I had, like, a giant lighter in my hand to make my fist. I didn't have, like, any weapon. I was just like, I'm just going to punch it in the nose. And <laughs> if it comes towards me, there was nothing there except for that giant bush. It was, like, a broken part of a tree with yeah. all, like, dead leaves on it. So... I got all upset. I was all pissed off. And I was like, oh my God, we were watching a bush move in the wind all night. I'm over it. I'm going to bed. Try and tell my friend that she, she refused to hear it. The next morning, she wakes me up saying that there's fur and there's bones over in that area. There was a dumpster right next to it. So it's very common for the coyotes or other animals to come over there, pull out food, probably chicken bones or squirrel or a coyote got a cat or something. It's very common to find animal bones over there. So I go over there. And I'm lucky there were chicken bones. But there was, like, weird fur on some of the branches. So I was like, whatever. Um, I'm over it. I'm not going to pay attention to it. Come up here. I'm making my coffee. I look out my window. I never once moved the branch, and neither did she, because it was a pretty decent-sized branch. I couldn't see the branch from my window, even during the daylight. So I kept going back and forth, up and down the stairs, sticking it in the ground, trying to pull it this way, trying to, like, replicate what I saw. I'd be like... Maybe the branch moved, maybe it got really windy. No matter what I did, I couldn't replicate it, and there was nothing reflective, like a wrapper or anything that could give the same effect as the eye shine. Then uh, I called up one of my friends, and I didn't tell her anything that happened. I just said, I had a crazy night, I got something crazy to tell you, you got to come over. So when she came over, the first thing that she said to me upon walking in my door was, why is there a ring of fur outside your door? dropped the coffee that she was <laughs> trying to hand me, and I ran outside <laughs> expecting to see, like, an actual physical circle of, you know, like, you think fairy ring or something like that, like an actual circle of fur, but it was an actual physical, like, ring that you would wear made out of the same type of fur that was on the branch, and there were still pieces of skin to it. She kept it. She lost it, unfortunately, because she kept it, and she didn't put it in a safe spot. But we ended up going into the woods when I told her about it, and we found these prints. At first, I thought they were displaced rocks because of how deep the indent was. But then when we noticed the pattern of them, then we were like, oh, my God, these are, like, footprints. These are actual physical footprints. We followed them randomly through the woods. It ended up in someone's backyard, so we tried to backtrack. There was a tree that was all, like, torn to hell, scratched up completely. I know termites can leave the same 
holes as a claw, leaving look like claw marks or uh, ears during rut season. But sometimes they leave some velvet behind on their antlers. So these were actual physical claw marks. So then we ended up walking to the side of it, and there was a huge tree, and there was like a giant stump, like a male part of a trunk of a tree, wedged all the way on top between these two branches that went out like a V, like a makeshift tree stand. And it was on a pretty tall tree. And as we're looking up at it, same tuft of the same exact color fur, that was the ring, and matched what I had seen. And on that branch, fell out of the tree onto us, but there was no way in or out. You couldn't pull a ladder up against it because the way it was, you would have to like <laughs> physically climb up it to get there. We tried. We were like, we're determined to see what's up there, but we can never get up there. Um, do you remember the one out here? Could you tell me anything? Did you see its its legs at all? Or yeah, no, you could. See, it was the same type of legs of the same one that ran behind the car. That thick, thick, muscular, like wrestler choke someone out with their thighs, <laughs> kind of like just straight muscle, and you could see like the pecs on the chest. It kind of like. It didn't really fully tamper where the waist was. It was still solid, but it wasn't as big as where the shoulders were. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like you. You didn't look like an upside down triangle. Like you know how bodybuilders they just they work on their arms and their legs and they get that weird. It was kind of all solid. It just was slightly smaller in the waist, but it was just muscle. You know, but there was still fur. Yeah, there was still fur everywhere. It wasn't like it was scattered. You know, did it have a tail? Yes, the one over here had a tail. The one behind the car had a tail, and the one right up the road had a tail. All three times I've seen it, it had a tail. Same long, big, bushy tail, like a Maine Coon cat kind of tail. Mm -hmm. Big bushy tail. Uh, could you see the eyes on this one that was out here? I, I mean, just saw the eyes the, shine. The eyes and the ears, and I could see the ears. The ears were kind of more straight up this time. They were like slightly bent, but they weren't as bent as when it was running. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They were still like on top of its ears, but they were big too. They were just pointy. They weren't okay. like floppy. They weren't like tiny. They were decent. Did it size. open its mouth at all? Did you see the tongue or anything like that? I didn't see any teeth. I didn't see any tongue. I just, as soon as I saw the eye shine, I'm like, how big do its eyes have to be in order for me to see the eye shine from here? Okay. That was my first thought on that. This was happened about 2 a.m. Um, I forgot the exact year, but it was between 2010 and 2014. It was summer month, um, and we were driving down this road, this is Danforth, and I saw this creature come out, and I have never seen anything like it before, but I knew it was a hybrid of something. And it seemed like it knew that we weren't there and it seemed not afraid at all. So as I saw this thing approach, this happened like a little bit ways up the street. As I saw it approach, I stopped because I didn't want to hit it and I was kind of worried. I didn't know what this thing was going to do. So it crossed the street. It was kind of like a slow canter or a lope and it looked at us and did not seem afraid at all. And then it just kept looking at us and like crossed the road. This thing was at the 
point of its shoulders was about this high. And the front half was a print of, I don't know, like a cheetah kind of print. Um, and it had kind of like a little bit of a mane, like a hyena would. Um, and the ears were probably like this big and pointed like back and down. And the snout was a canine snout, paws, everything in the, in the front was definitely canine looking or like a coyote would be. And then the back half was it sloped down like a hyena's back end would and there was no fur on from like the half last half of the rib cage down was no fur at all. And I thought that was strange because how could a creature just literally be split in half of pattern to no fur um, at all. And it was gray in color, the patch, I mean the um the print was like a darker gray. And the tail, there was a tail there, but very mangy looking, um, and probably about like this long. And me and my friend just, my friend really doesn't believe in paranormal stuff, so I was thinking, well, at least I have a witness, but how is this thing going to play out if I tell someone about it? Um, so. Now, do you remember the back legs? Did, were they light canine looking as well? Or? They were light canine, um, like a, a dog's would be. Uh, I was just, the size of it and the way it sloped down, I didn't know how an animal could be possible having that shape. So I thought, well, I know there's a farm around in Rehoboth that has exotic animals, so maybe it was a hybrid, maybe it escaped, and I didn't really know what to think of it. Now, did you see its face at all? Like, did it look at you? Yes, it looked directly at us. Like, it purposely went in front of the car. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and when it looked at you, did you see the eye at all? Did it have an eye shine? or? I thought it looked like a dog's eye, but it didn't. I didn't notice the color at all. I just saw it was darker. This was a two in the morning it's only my car light shining on it and its mouth was open and there was pointed canine looking teeth. Did you see the tongue at all by any chance? I know some people are like well the one I seen had a human like tongue or the yeah. one I seen had the long canine like tongue so I always ask the question because we never know yeah. what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, do you remember getting any feeling for it or when you looked in the eyes and stuff did you, did you see it have a thought process where it was looking at you and thinking or did it just yes I felt like it was connecting with me sort of like telepathically I know it sounds a little crazy but I felt that it knew that we were coming around the corner and we were going to be there and like it was like hey I'm here you see me but now I'm going to go and I wasn't afraid in that moment but once it crossed and went into the woods I was freaked out because I only live just a um, a little around the end of the street of this, and I was like, this could be around. So I was... Yeah, it, it, being out here, <laughs> yeah, definitely got room to run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty pretty thick out here. Yeah, <laughs> and there is marshland in that area where it came from, and there's just woods, and there's farmland, so I really don't know. You know. Do you know about what time of year it happened? Like, was it... It was the summer month, I know, because we had very light clothing on. And we had been outside a, a club that we had been at in Cranston, and so it was fairly late. In the evening. Yeah, yeah. It was at 2 a.m., so it was, could have been a little chilly, but okay, not super cool. Okay. <laughs>